Hello, True Crime Stories family. Welcome back. Katie and Chris Proudfoot are MIA. They packed up their RV and abandoned their home. Seth Rogers hasn't seen them, although he is desperate to know the whereabouts of his son, Sebastian Rogers, who has been missing for a month. Seth told News Nation that neither Katie nor Chris Proudfoot have spoken with him about the investigation. He said, I haven't spoken to them for two weeks. They're not talking to me. Have you talked to Sebastian's mom, uh, stepdad? You mentioned you had that conversation when, when they said, you know, he's gone missing, but have they been able to give any more information? I haven't spoken to them for at least two weeks. They have, they're not talking to me. There are reports that they have packed up an RV and left, left the house that Sebastian disappeared from. Any idea why they would do that? I have no idea. I have no information. They weren't talking to me, so I was out here trying to find my son. In the Proudfoot's first interview, Chris said that the communication between the three of them is great, and they communicate every day with Sebastian's dad, Seth. They all work together as a team to come up with solutions that's best for Sebastian. In two different households, and the communication between the three of us is, is great. I mean, yes, we're just like every parent. We all have our disagreements, but in the end, we come together as a team and we work and we come up with solutions that as we best see fit. I mean, he's, I'm almost in contact with him almost daily. Nancy Grace's interview with the Proudfoots was filled with lies and inconsistencies. They talked about the lights that were outside their house. They said it's flood lights, solar lights in the garden, and lights above their garage that never goes off. We found one light on the porch near the front door. Two solar lights in the garden. Two lights above the garage. There is two lights in their backyard. The Proudfoots have three bedrooms on the bottom floor. The master bedroom is on one side of the house and the two other bedrooms are on the other side. So Katie would have to walk through the kitchen to get to Sebastian's room. She would immediately know if Sebastian was getting breakfast or hiding on the morning he went missing. This is the master bedroom where Katie and Chris sleep. These are the other two bedrooms. One bedroom Sebastian disappeared from. This is the bonus room on the second floor.
This is the back door that leads to the backyard. We want to give a shout out to one truth seeker and say thank you for this idea. Making a video highlighting the different scenarios surrounding the last night Sebastian was seen in their first interview where she says she put him to bed and then goes to bed shortly after. When I told him to go to bed, he did. <laughs> um, he said good night, mom. I love you. Um, say good night to his puppies. Um, a little bit later, I wound up going to bed. But then, in her interview with Chronicles, she says differently, that she put Sebastian to bed at around 9 p.m., and that she says that she didn't go to bed until much later, around midnight that night. That's a big difference of putting him to bed and then going to bed shortly after. About midnight, I got up and I went to bed. In their first interview, Katie said, after they got home, Sebastian was playing in his room. He was playing in his room. Um, when I told him to go to bed, he did. <laughs> In their video with Chronicles, Katie said Sebastian took out the trash. There's a big difference between playing until going to bed and doing chores before going to bed. Came home. Um, he took out the trash because that's his chore. He takes the can to the end of the driveway. Um, about nine o'clock told him to go to bed. In their first interview, Katie never mentioned she heard noise coming from Sebastian's room. In their video with Chronicles, Katie said she heard noise from Sebastian's room and told him to go to sleep. He was doing something in his room because about an hour later I heard some noise and I was like, I don't care what you're doing in there, but go to sleep. In their first interview, Katie said she wasn't initially alarmed by Sebastian being missing. She just took a second look around the house thinking something's wrong or were you like he may just be already in the shower in the living room i took a second and walked through the house looking for him in case he'd gotten up and was trying to get breakfast or something because he did that sometimes in their interview with chronicles katie said she panicked thinking holy crap where is my kid there's a big difference between not being alarmed and panicking myself holy freaking crap this can't be happening where is my kid in their first interview katie said she looked for sebastian for three minutes then called her husband three minutes in give or take i was on the phone with my husband i said i can't find him in their interview with chronicles katie said she looked for sebastian for one minute flat there's a big difference between one minute and three minutes but um After I looked, and I mean, mind you, all of this took place in like one minute flat. In their first interview, Chris said while they were on the phone, he was asking Katie, did she check places in the house that Sebastian could be? And immediately after, they called the authorities. But Katie looked inside and outside the house and inside the closets. She, while we were on the phone, and I was, I was like, is he on the other side of the bed? We, the normal places he may be in the house, you know, and he wasn't. So I was like, okay, well, hold on a minute. And immediately after that, we called the sheriff's department and made the report. I and, ran all over the house, outside, inside. I looked in every closet. When minutes they were here. In their interview with Chronicles, Katie said she ran through the house, looked out all the doors and windows, then started hollering Sebastian's name, jumped in the car, drove around the neighborhood and to Sebastian's school, crying and screaming hysterically. Chris starts coughing to signal Katie, and she starts stuttering out of fear of revealing too much. There's a big difference between Katie looking inside and outside the house for Sebastian and actually driving around the neighborhood. Um, I didn't see him in his room. I looked all over. I ran through the whole house. I looked out all the doors and windows, and I was, like, hollering his name, and... Um, I picked up the phone and I called my husband and I said, um, I can't find him. And he said, what do you mean? I said, he's not in this effing house. I can't find our son. And, um, I like, I jumped in my car and I drove around the neighborhood and I drove over by the school and he's already 
like I, at this point I was like hysterical and I was crying and I was screaming and um, <coughs> he was like um, uh, three-wayed he three-wayed law enforcement we pray that Sebastian is found safe we have to acknowledge how hard Sebastian's father is working to bring his son home. The proud foots went from portraying Sebastian as a good kid, that's responsible and had the ability to get up early and make himself breakfast, to being a rambunctious, aggressive kid. That's angry because he is going through puberty and will growl in your face. With so many inconsistencies in the proud foots interviews, we hope the truth will come to light soon and justice is served. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.